Hi, this is attorney Arcady Freckman, a New York City personal injury trial attorney. And today I wanted to talk about a frequently asked question that you, our viewers, have been asking in the comments to a lot of our videos. And we've noticed that a lot of people will list an injury, for example, an epidural steroid injection or a facet joint injection. And they'll say, what is that worth? How much money am I going to obtain? Well, I think the important thing to consider is, and we've done other videos where we talked about the different factors, right? That determine how much you're gonna get. And those include the venue, like what state, what city, um, the liability, who is at fault, the injury, which people list injuries. But one of the important things to consider is that the entire uh, field of personal injury law, which is civil trial law and civil justice, is not really formulaic. And what I mean by that is, it's not like you could plug in a formula and say, look, I had a facet joint injection and two epidurals, and my payout is cha -cha -cha ching $137,576.27. It doesn't work like that, right? The entire um, process of personal injury is like malleable and flowing, and it's almost like artsy in a way, right? It's kind of like, saying like which novel is better is it a novel by this author or a novel by that author right it's all subjective so the important thing to consider is that when you step foot into a courtroom what you're doing is first and foremost is your lawyer is picking a jury so they're doing the voir dire process so if your lawyer is skillful at picking a jury what they're going to do is they're going to choose a jury that's going to be fair and impartial and neutral and is not going to be closed-minded to your type of case. Some people don't like slip and falls, right? They think, oh, if you slipped and fell, it's your own fault, and I would never allow for money for a slip and fall. So if your lawyer leaves one of those jurors on your jury and they get impaneled in New York, you have six jurors. So if that juror becomes a leader and then convinces everyone else that slip and falls are BS, you could have a slip and fall with a fusion and get like $5,000. But like, you know, usually a slip and fall with a fusion, if it's good liability, should command like $2 million, right? Or more. Like we just settled one last week for $1.7 million. We had another one in 2020 for $1.8 million. So why is somebody getting like $5,000 or zero? Well, because they let that juror on the panel, right? So all of these things, persuasion, the way people uh, view the evidence, and um, the jury is very important. Also, which judge you get because the judge controls the evidence. So if he lets in damaging evidence or she lets in damaging evidence and, and then if, if they um, tend to be against your case, sometimes what happens in trial in all practicality is the judge says, look, they're offering you $250,000. I think that's a fair number. You should take it. And if your client says no and you say no, then from that point onward, the judge could be like very... Uh, you know, mean to your case and basically like make rulings against you and kind of tell the jury, hey, this case is like not so not so kosher. Not it's kind of like a BS case, and then and then that judge will hurt your case, and then now you're not able to get a fair verdict. That happens a lot. So you know, there's all these different factors. So when somebody says, look, look, I, I have this injury, how much am I going to get? It's just not something you could plug plug in and, and obtain. In other types of uh, cases, like I think in workers' comp, that's more common. But with personal injury, especially with uh, a jury trial, it's just not something you can do. And I think the big, big ticket item that you really have to uh, look at is the likability factor of the plaintiff, right? The person that's bringing the lawsuit. If the person that's bringing the lawsuit is likable, if they're like a nice person, if they're calm, if they're honest and they come across sincere, then a jury could allow for a substantial compensation. If the person comes across as some kind of a player where they're trying to game the system or they're trying to be too greedy and ask for too much money, then that same jury could say, look, this person is just like a, a fake or a fraud and give them much less or nothing. So a lot of it comes down to that. That's why one of the things we really like to do is get to know our client on the serious injury cases, go to their house, do Zoom video calls or FaceTime calls, really like get to know them, do biographies for them. Who were they as children? What are their passions? Where do they find joy? What do they love? Who do they love? And then you find these community witnesses, right? Like their dry cleaner, their neighbor, their coworker. You bring them to court and each witness maybe just talks for like five minutes about how this plaintiff's life has changed 
before the injury they used to go out and play sports. But now after the injury, I see that they're stuck in their house. And when they leave their house, they're using a cane. So I see their life has changed. And why would like a, a neighbor across the street who doesn't even really know the person come to court and lie about that, right? And they're on the stand for five or 10 minutes. So that's very, very powerful. Now, a lot of lawyers don't bother to do that. But if you do do that, right, if you have the coworkers, the neighbors, the, I don't know, the dry cleaner, the, the, the people that you interact with in your life to show almost like two different roads, the road you had before you got injured, and now the road that you're on now after the serious, life-changing, forever injury. If you have those two roads, well, then you're going to see much more money. So if you have a serious case, I, you know, I, I recommend just give us a call. We'll be happy to sit down with you or, or do a phone consultation. It's free of charge. And the entire lawsuit is free of charge. We pay all the expenses. And then at the end of the case, the legal fee is set by the appellate division. And it's only like one third of the recovery. So for example, if we recover a million dollars for someone, um, that person gets about 700,000 and our legal fee is 300,000. That's the way the courts have set it in New York. So I hope this has been helpful um, just to explain that it's not formulaic, it's not mathematical, it's really all up to um, you know, being authentic, being true. Um, one thing that we always stress in jury selection is brutal honesty and trying to get the jurors talking and be honest with us. And, um, and then we're honest with them. And then if you have a real case and the case has merit, then you're gonna get a fair and sometimes more than fair, a substantial compensation. And if the case doesn't have merit, if it's some kind of, you know, um, you know, orchestrated or created, concocted false case, then you're, you're not gonna see, you're gonna get a much less sliver of justice, right? Much less money and then, or maybe nothing. So I hope this has been helpful. Let us know what questions you have and we'll be happy to dive into any of these factors in more specificity. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.